Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Ramsey Custom Shop. My name is Gary. This is gonna be part two of a video that I put up yesterday. So if you just go to the last video on my channel, or if you're watching this sometime in the future, there's a card up in the right hand corner or maybe bottom left corner of your screen, depending on what kind of device you're looking at, or in the description of the video. Um, and I wanted to just go over some, some things that I learned in that video. And if you haven't watched the video, go check it out. And not just watch the video because it's really just me, you know, messing around. But if you go and read the comments, wow, some really, really good suggestions in there. Uh, and some, some great things that, that I didn't think about. I don't weld stainless a lot. I mean, almost never. And um, this project is not going to be a structural project. So the, the importance on... Uh, you know, having really deep, great penetration is, is not really that important. What is important is that it gets sealed up completely because this is going to be a gas, uh, a gas rail for, for gas to flow through. And um, so um, the thing I weld most of is hot rolled uh, steel. And, and um, when you TIG weld hot rolled steel, it's not very clean, you know, and you can often get sort of a gray uh, hazed over look to it and um but maybe some of the time when i weld hot rolled steel that i get that great over look it's because you know of of uh, bad torch angle or too much heat or whatever and maybe sometimes it's because the metal just isn't clean and it oxidizes and you can't get a you know a, a very clean weld but um so what I'm going to do in this video is take some of the comments and things that people left in the last video and, and try to work on it. One of the issues I had in that video was, you know, I've got these little cutoff pieces that I'm using to test with from the bigger pieces and it's not very stable, you know, and I was just trying to prop it. And even when I was welding it, you know, and if you, and a lot of times when you're welding something and you don't have it on a stable ground, it'll actually start rocking on you while you're welding it. Um, the weld will put a vibration in it and, and I was also having a problem where, you know, my, uh, my electro or my uh, filler material was actually sticking in there, which is normally an indication that you're not hot enough. Um, these outside corner joints that didn't weld very well, and I showed this in, in the last video, you can see that's a nice, you know, weld there. And then these outside corner joints really sort of grayed over. And uh, hopefully you're seeing that in the camera, just sort of hazy looking and grayed over. And that's what I was going to work on here to try to get this where it looks the same all the way around before I weld it on the, on the, uh, the real project here. Um, now the issue with this being too small, I don't have to worry about that on the, on the big project because it's going to be a large, you know, squared off to basically eight by eight square. And so it'll have some weight and mass to it and I can clamp the whole thing down, but I am going to make an effort to get this clamped when I weld the outside corner joint. So at least that'll be stable and not really wanting to move on me. And there's nothing worse if you do dip your rod and it sticks a little bit, normally, you know, it'll kind of pull its way back out. But when you got a little tiny piece and it sticks a little bit, well now you just move the piece around and you know, you've kind of messed up your weld and you're not, you know, on a straight path anymore. So anyway, enough rambling. Let me get a couple pieces prepped here and I'm gonna weld these again. So the first tip is go watch that other video and go look at the comments in it. 6061.com man several guys that watch my channel they don't watch every video i make but they do kind of you know check in every now and then and uh give me some tips and it's always great to have them uh along you know and you know what they're never critical even though they're experts and they probably are watching me going dude you're an idiot you're a hack you're an idiot um but they don't really say that you know they they're pretty nice about the comments that they leave there so they're it's good to have those guys along watching so let me um the, but the uh, so that's the number one tip the number two tip is if you're trying to do this at home and learn record yourself even if you don't make videos for youtube or whatever just record yourself and watch it back because you're always going to see things differently than how you thought you experienced them and one of the things that some guys several guys pointed out was the uh, post flow and the torch angle now post flow is something i have set to the max on my welder which i think is 15 seconds that doesn't do you any good unless you leave the torch down there. And because it was a practice piece, I was in a hurry, you know, not really holding the dwell on the, on the post flow. 
And then the other thing they mentioned was torch angle. Now that is something I definitely work on all the time and I always try to, you know, um, if, if I'm gonna weld this, you know, this piece up right here, hopefully you guys can see that. I mean, you know, you wanna, you wanna be parallel to the surface that you're working at and not be cocked on any kind of an angle. Now you sometimes, depending on the position and what you're at, you need to kind of turn it on a little bit of an angle to be able to see. But for the most part, if you're trying to weld this flat surface, you would want to be as close to up and down and square and parallel to that as you can. And I think sometimes I definitely get, you know, turned out on a little bit more of an angle. So we're going to work on those two things and see if we can get uh, this practice piece here welded up. And I'm going to put my other cup back on because pretty much most everybody said, hey, it's not really the cup. You know, the cup may be helping you a tiny bit, but for the most part, you should be able to weld that with, with this cup. So I'm gonna put my other cup back on and focus more on the welder settings, the torch angle, and uh, and the travel speed, which the, to me, I think the travel speed was the main issue. So let me get going and uh, I'll show you that and we'll come back and sum it up here when I get done with it. All right, I tried to go quite a bit faster that time. And it's still grayed over a little bit, so I'm running a little less heat. I'm gonna try to go at the same speed. And I've got my torch angle, you know, it's it's pretty much straight up and down level. Okay. It's gonna be the hot. So it's definitely, definitely better. But it, it still has a little bit of a gray look to it. So I'm gonna do these valleys and and uh, with the same, you know, basic technique and and uh, all that. Now, you know, I'm gonna go to So I'm going to do one more. I'm going to chamfer all these edges and try to run a little less heat and see if I can get that to come out really clean. All right, I got the edges chamfered on the, on this one. Tried to get it down to where it's about an eighth of an inch of thickness. I think one of the things that's happening is because these things are cut on an angle, um, your your 120 wall tubing is actually turning into not not quite double but maybe 316 so it's getting really thick and um you know which is taking more heat to uh to weld it 
So let me get these fitted up and tacked. All right, the one thing I just did was that I didn't didn't know if I had done or not was I checked my gas flow and it was on like 12 CFH. So I just bumped that up to 20 CFH and I think that's uh, gonna make a difference there. But anyway, uh, that's one I just did and it was, there was a pretty big gap up here and it wasn't feeling very well. So I don't know, I overheated it right there. So, um, they still look a little gray looking to me, and um, but I definitely need to practice more before I get going on this on a permanent, on the real ones. So anyway, I don't know that I learned anything except for, um, all I know is when I had this on there, the outside joints definitely looked better. And the things I changed on this one were faster travel speed, less heat, better torch angle. And I don't know if I held the post flow any better or not you guys can tell from the video whether i did but anyway this stuff you know it, to, to get good at it you you got to practice at it and you can't just never weld stainless and then come out and think you're just gonna weld it i mean supposedly it's easier to weld um and it does make some pretty welds if i guess if you have everything uh done correctly you can see that one there is terrible um but anyway, go check out 6061.com. He's got some cool tips and tricks and uh, on his channel. Um, and I don't want to say tips and tricks. That's stealing somebody else's stuff. But educational information, plus he sells the online course on his website that is a really good value. And you get a lot of good videos for that. I signed up for it a while back. Clearly, I need to go back and watch more of them, right? All right, guys. See you.